Derek Carr struggles against a tough Philly defense, ladies and gentlemen. The New Orleans Saints fall 12-15 to to the Philadelphia Eagles. Today we're going to talk about why the backdrop is off the bench. Saints with T-Bob and Jacob Hester. Before I get to the video, a bit out of order here, I want to go to this article by Cody Alexander from Match Quarter. So he had posted something on Twitter about how the Fangio idea of how to stop Kubiak and stop the Saints looked very familiar, and he sent a link or posted a link to uh, to this article way back in 2019. A uh, peaceful time, ladies and gentlemen. And the article talks about how Bill Belichick stifled Sean McVay and stymied the, a lot of, a lot of great words are dropping here, uh, the Rams offense in the Super Bowl. If you remember correctly, it was a horrible Super Bowl, 13 to three, uh, three points from the, the Los Angeles Rams in the Super Bowl. I want to read you some of this article because when I read it, I was a bit shocked. I, I, it really kind of blew my mind. We won't go over the entire thing. I mean, it's one hell of an article, okay? And uh, But if you want to check it out, I will obviously post a link in the description. But let me go ahead and read you a few pieces here. Uh, let me go back now that I've scrolled all the way down. So LA coming into the game had the number two offense DVOA. I would I would guess the Saints were number one that year. Uh, and the number one rushing attack in the league. Sound familiar, right? Uh, the 13-point score by the Patriots in the Super Bowl would have netted the Patriots a 1-7 record, one and 17 record against the Rams during the 2018 season. For many, the Super Bowl would rely heavily on the Patriots' ability to stop the run. Uh, we had, this is from Bill Belichick. We had to put together something that would neutralize the running game and their big play-action passes on early downs. So it sounds very familiar of what Kubiak wants to do. Belichick devised a simple yet ingenious idea to counter the Rams' offense. Uh, Belichick knew he had to slow down the run game. To do this, he used a goal line defense in the middle of the field. This is from Andrew Whitworth, who's now a commentator on Thursday Night Football. They played six on the line all day, which kind of limited the space to get runs in there. They played an open field 6-2 almost, but with one guy in the middle, and they played a lot more zone than they played all season. So that kind of shook it up a little bit. Belichick basically rolled out a 6-1, too high shelled, and defended one of the NFL's hottest offenses. The scheme was very basic, and the execution was flawless. The front the Patriots ran basically choked out the Rams' zone run game, especially the wide zone that had killed many opponents before. Todd Gurley ended the night with 10 carries, 35 yards, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by halftime, the Super Bowl was over. Once vaunted, the Rams' offense looked out of sorts and stagnant. The Patriots' plan to force golf to beat them through the air worked to perfection. As the stats support, the Rams' offense had two first downs in the first half, held the ball for a third of the time, and accumulated 57 total yards. Though the score was 3 to nothing, it felt like a daunting hill to climb for the Rams. Ladies and gentlemen, golf would end the night 19 for 38 for 229, zero touchdowns, one interception. The Patriots would sack golf four times, and the longest pass being completed for 29 yards. This right here... Uh, what, what the Patriots did was design a defense that forced the ball into golf's hands. McVay had little to go off of pre-snap because the Patriots lined up in a static front and a too high shell on most of the downs. Motion did very little because the Patriots sat in zone the entire game. With overhangs on either end, the secondary didn't have to bother with the jet motions McVay used to out-leverage defenses. Post-snap, the secondary would rotate to a single high look to add layers to the zone coverage or stay in a simple cover four that reacted to the vertical stretching routes in the middle of the field. This would take away the Rams' crossing routes and inhibit the reduced formations from rubbing man, defen uh, man rubbing manned defenders. All year, the Patriots had played more man than zone, but used the Detroit Lions' template of a zone-heavy scheme to counter the Rams' offense in the Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, I could have replaced Patriots with Eagles and Rams with Saints, and it would have been the exact same blueprint. So this is how it happened. We solved the riddle. With a little help from the from Coach A over at Match Quarters. Again, please go check out the article. It's so, so good. I've been digging through it all day today. <clears throat> it's one of those things where, and I kind of hinted at this in some videos recapping the game earlier, but when you say stuff, amorphous stuff, that doesn't mean anything, and the stuff is like, oh, well, the, the Saints just got punched in the mouth, or, oh, the Saints aren't, they always choke, or this was a trap game, or, you know, what, whatever, like the stuff you can't quantify it doesn't do the game justice. This does the game justice. This explains exactly, and not just a little blurb I, I read, that certainly does explain it, but if you go through the entire thing, I mean, it lays out exactly, exactly how 
this happened in the Super Bowl, then you can just you know, transfer it over to the Eagles game. So now we know. And I can go ahead and tell you this. I'm, Clint Kubiak hopefully sees this. I'm, I may go ahead and, and send, it, send an email to him uh, after this video. But So now we know what happened. And if you don't know how this played out for the Rams, they lost the Super Bowl, but everything worked out pretty good for the Rams, worked out pretty good for Sean McVay, worked out pretty good for his system, and worked out pretty good in the end for Jared Goff right, right now in Detroit. So all the doomers who are saying that Kubiak is cooked, imagine if you had to watch that in the Super Bowl. Okay, so were people saying McVay is cooked? Were people saying that he, you know, it's over for him and he can't do it and fire him and get somebody else in there and send McVay back to being an OC. Like, I don't think people were saying that. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure they were, but it obviously didn't stick and it would have been ridiculous. And the Rams were fine uh, when it was all said and done. This is a hiccup. And this was a perfect curveball thrown by uh, Vic Fangio and Fangio threw a curveball, just like Belichick threw a curveball to uh, McVay and McVay couldn't figure it out in the brightest lights uh, and McVay is one of my favorite coaches of all time. Him and Kyle Shanahan are way up there. McVay is probably my, my number one. I, mean, I love Kyle Shanahan like a brother, but Sean McVay is probably my number one guy. Um, and if Sean McVay couldn't figure it out with a team as talented as the Rams were, like, like that said, number two DVOA offense, number one DVOA defense, um, then you know, the fact that Kubiak struggled in this one isn't isn't shocking. The point is that McVay did figure it out. The point is that it worked in that moment, sure, but the Rams figured it out. McVay figured it out, and uh, everything was everything was PG King uh, after that. So, it, it, if nothing else, just know that this has certainly happened before to this exact offense. Like this is a carbon copy of that carbon copy of the of just a perfectly timed counter from Vic Fangio and the Philadelphia Eagles and Kubiak and McVay both both fell into a uh, pretty bad circumstances. So with that is kind of the backdrop and that answers a lot of questions. I think let's go ahead and watch the video. Um, all right, let's talk about the new Orleans saints who in an absolute battle on Sunday, them and the Philadelphia Eagles going toe to toe, uh, looking like the saints found a way, even though the offense had come crashing back down to earth this week, looking like the Saints had found a way to maybe win the game. They drive down. Chris Olave, a beautiful toe-tap touchdown. Great catch from Olave. I mean, he made that look really easy, and it wasn't really easy. Up until he got the second foot down, I thought, I thought it was going to go out of bounds. So kudos to Chris Olave. With only a minute left in the game, you take a five-point lead. Now, crucially, two-point conversion, you fail. And obviously that that was a bad play. I mean, I've said that before. The Jamal Williams, like, why is he the one doing that? We we can talk about the impact that ends up having, but you still take the lead. You're up by more than three. You feel at that moment your defense, which has been shutting the Eagles down, you don't feel it's a guarantee, but you feel like you got a pretty good yeah. chance. Yeah, the advantage for 100%. sure. You had the advantage. Yeah. I don't know the win share. I'm sure somebody can check it out, but I'm sure the win probability for the Saints was north of 75%. And unfortunately, you just could not make the plays defensively. You had the incidental hands to the face, which probably would have been, what, about a oh, third and 15 Taylor, to first down. Know, Only a five-yard penalty yeah. begins to fresh it down. Yeah. And then you had the 61-yard oh. or 65-yard oh. Goddard catch where classic man-to-man -man coverage – rub route over the middle, and just an awful visual as three different Saints run into each other in the middle of the field, and Goddard just has unlimited uh, area in front of him with which to run, and they end up scoring. They end up taking a lead. And then right at the beginning of your, what could be a game-winning drive, and Derek Carr's been good at this. Remember, I was being a bit tough. Yeah, part, I will say, like, even after they scored and we got the ball, I, I was thinking, I was like, you know what, we did just kind of score. We have, we, you know, this is what Carr has been known to do in his career. And I was like, this, this might be that moment. And man, what a moment it would have been for Carr to kind of seal that victory and get it, get a game winning drive at home like that. But you, you, I mean, everyone knows what happened. Tongue in cheek last week, but like since 16, more 
um, touchdown drives to take the lead, I think, within two minutes. You saw it the drive before, even though it technically wasn't within two, than any other quarterback in the league. So yeah. I'm still holding out a little hope. Pressure got to him. Bad decision, bad throw, yeah. pick, game over. Game um, set match. Game yep. set match. So there's a lot to break down here. My overall feeling is this. Uh, does it suck because it felt like even with all the bad, you'd put yourself in a position to win at the end? Yes, it yes. hurts. A loss always hurts. But do not overreact to this. The same way that we like, you know, said, look, the offense is going to come back, try not to overreact to me. Do not overreact to this. I think you are still a good team. What that defense did is still an elite defense. Credit to the Eagles for counting your offense. I think Kubiak will work to counter the counter. T Bob is preaching. T Bob is preaching right here. I mean, he's wearing a, the Shire shirt. He sounds like Gandalf right now. He's the smartest guy in the room, 100%. You can't overreact to either side. I've seen a lot of people say, well, you know, we overreacted saying we were going to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> so now it's no reaction here. We are closer, and I believe this. If I say it, I mean it. If I mean it, I believe it. I think we are closer to the Super Bowl aspiration team of last week than we are to the woe is me, Doomer, Pete Carmichael, and Clint Kubiak are the same person. This is a this was a heartbreaking loss in week three to a legit Super Bowl contender in the Philadelphia Eagles who easily could be 3-0. and We had a couple of injuries. We threw our D game, maybe even our F game. And with a minute left, we were winning by five. And we probably had an 80% chance to win the game. So... The fact that you can compete at this level with a Super Bowl team, even when nothing is working for you, to me, that tells me that we can compete. I mean, we can sit there and contend. If we would have had our B game, I mean, we would have, you know, obviously we would have won the game. But a loss sucks. A loss feels bad. It's a, it's a depressing feeling for sure. But there is a little bit of silver lining to this one. You got the Falcons this Sunday. You win that game. You're three and three one. And one. Everything's and all good. Yep. And again, because sometimes you have to look around to maintain perspective. Tampa Bay Bucks, who have looked just Rolled. as good as you through two weeks, yeah, they go get completely dominated twenty six to seven by the Denver Broncos. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like right now, look across the league. What would you put the panic index for the 49ers? Below a what two touchdown lead, ten point lead against the Rams. Below that, they had like a ninety eight percent win share. What's the panic level of the Houston Texans? You win by six against the lowly Bears at home. You go get absolutely destroyed against Sam Darnold and the Minnesota Vikings. What's your panic level? Baltimore Ravens. You're zero and two now. You're one and two. What's your panic level? The Saints' panic level should be no higher than any of those teams. And I don't think any of those teams are saying, well, maybe C.J. Stroud isn't the guy. Well, maybe Lamar Jackson isn't the guy. Well, maybe Kyle Shanahan isn't who we thought he was. I know this is all brand new for this team. And I know we have a little bit of PTSD with last year. But the fact that it's funny because the fact that we are sitting here at 2-1 and when the Falcons lost on, on Sunday night, when the Buccaneers lost to the Broncos in embarrassing fashion, when the Panthers are the Panthers, we're 2-1 and one with a road game against the Falcons. We, I mean, in four or five days here, we are playing at Atlanta for a stranglehold, Ted Nugent style, on the division. You win that game, you send Atlanta to 1-3, and three, and you're 3-1, 2-0 and one, two and oh in the division? I mean... That you, you talk about the fast track to 11, 12 wins and a division championship and hosting a playoff game. Okay. Boat, boat, like the, the NFL's weird. Yep. And you took an Eagles team that was back in the wall, hungry, granted, training in the way wrong, wrong direction, which made the most disappointing part about all this. They've not won a lot recently. But you took them, you had them, but you allowed them to escape with really three big plays. Yeah. The long Saquon run. Goddard. The Goddard catch at the end, and really Goddard's day as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Goddard catch Goddard at the end. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, he was he was Goddard mode. Yeah. And and then beginning of the fourth quarter, you have fourth and one. 
uh, up 3-0 in the Philly red zone. You run it twice, third one four, and you get stuffed both times. That's bad. That's bad. And that's how you lose at the end of the day. Easy to say, but that I don't think we get stopped there with Taysom. You know, I mean, like, again, this is not a full-strength Saints team versus a full-strength Eagles team. This was a war of attrition between two teams that were struggling, two teams that were not sharp, two teams that made a ton of mistakes, and it came down to the last couple plays of the game. All right, so here's, here's a little bit of the worry for me. In the NFL, you can have a start like the Saints did. And it was incredible. It was making a lot of us eat a lot of crow, which is great. I want to be able to do that. Saints are good. Things are good here, right? But you get two weeks of film on them. Yeah. And it was new. Now, if it was old, if it was something that you were established, you had your coordinator for three, four years, your system for three, four years, and oh, I'd be like, okay, I'll hand wave this. A little bit of my worry is, well, now you've got two weeks of film on what the Saints are trying to get done. Derek Carr, 14 of 25, only 142 yards, only 5.7 yards per attempt, right? That that number's way down from what he had been. Alvin Kamara, 26 carries, 87 yards, only 3.3 yards per carry. The running lanes didn't look like they did in the first couple of weeks. Dallas getting hammered, you know, last yesterday again. It's like, oh, man, well, I thought that maybe held up a little bit better. Uh, you know, Carolina being Carolina, although we'll get to the Red Rifle a little bit Dalton. later on in the show. Um, another thing that gives me a little bit of worry, Rashid Shahid, no catches, five targets. Yeah. yeah. He was kind of the thing that unlocked everything for you in the – Yeah, I mean, for sure. Especially, again, like especially with Taysom being out, you know, it's like one of those things where someone else has got to be involved. And today, I, I, the more I look back at the, mo- the box score, the more I'm just befuddled that Kamara wasn't utilized more in the passing game. And I guess I guess the response to that is, well, he was busy carrying the ball 30 times. So, okay, I understand that. But, uh, yeah, and to Jacob's point, like I think it's a good point. I think, I think it's worth, you know, I think it's a valid question of, okay, is this because of two weeks of film? And is, is, it, is the secret out? You know, secret is definitely out, no doubt about it. But just like I showed you at the beginning of the video with the Rams example, that was in the Super Bowl. So a whole season, the playoffs, and then comes the Super Bowl, boom, you get hit with something like that. So it's just one of those things where I don't think there's very much more to it than Fangio just kind of took a risk, uh, you know, had, had a bit of a gambit there, a little chess terminology, and, and it paid off. And just like it paid off for Belichick, paid off for Fangio, he said, we're, we're going to get into this super heavy kind of run-stopping defense and uh, confuse the Rams, confuse the Saints. So I'm much I'm much more, I guess I'm happier that it happened in week three and not in the playoffs or not in the Super Bowl. Because imagine if we were to go through an entire season of this and, and you know, whatever, with a two seed, one seed, three seed, we hosting a playoff game, and then we have to watch something like this. So Kubiak now knows the kryptonite. And now we're going to see exactly if Kubiak is who I think he is and if him and his staff can look at his, look at this game plan and if they can say, okay, we know it beats us now. We know, and this, this will make us better. If Kubiak can figure out how to counter the counter, then this ain't going to work in the playoffs. This isn't going to work in a must-win game. This isn't going to work in a conference championship because he will have already seen it he will know how to adjust. The whole team will know how to adjust. So in a weird way, and maybe this is a lot of copium mixed in with a little bit of hopium, but in a weird way, it's a good thing it happened in week three. It's a good thing that it happened so dramatically. And dramatically, I mean, like, it was so effective. I mean, this was, they, I mean, the Eagles throttled down the Saints as much as any team possibly could. So in a way th- they now know. And we'll see against Atlanta if Kubiak can can adjust. First two games, his speed beat coverages that only speed can beat. And he was targeted five times and came up with zero catches. Those those are things. Defense was awesome. I know yeah. that Saquon Barkley went off. I know Ben Ben don't break. I mean, I you know, I'm hesitant to say it, it was good. No doubt about it. You pitch a shutout into the fourth quarter, I will give you the flowers. 
but this was not a defensive like struggle that you might think it was. Again, they had a hundred, had five hundred yards of offense. Again, they averaged seven yards per play. Again, they averaged seven yards per rush. Again, Dallas Goddard had 170 yards. Saquon had 140 yards. Devontae Smith had, had whatever, you know, 10 targets, eight catches, and 70 yards. It was absolutely elite in high leverage situation. Fourth down, red zone, you know, the special teams, all that. But this wasn't, this isn't the defensive struggle I think that some people are making it out to be. He had a, you know, uh, a couple of really big hitters, including a 65 yarder, but you held an NFL team with someone who finished second in the MVP at quarterback oh, yeah. not that long ago to 15 points. And I mean, that's going to be good enough to win. It should be every single time. Well, and, and like, well, a good point too is that, like he just said a couple of years ago, you have the second, the, the guy who got second in the MVP. You also have the, the team that got second in the entire season, right? The Super Bowl runner ups. So this is a team, knows how to win, good team, MVP level players all pro level players all over the place. That's what this is. And you took that team to the absolute limit, to the absolute brink with nowhere near your A game. And Hertz's legs didn't kill you. You you picked him off, you forced a fumble, you got two turnovers on downs. Like the defense gave you sacked you four. Him, what, four times? Yeah, the def- Brian Brzee had two alone. Yeah, Brian yeah. Brzee was great. You you, yeah. you 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 forced him into you forced him into four turnovers. Yes. Defense so, was awesome. The defense giving up 15 points to that offense, that's good enough to win and you, Dennis Allen was said, "I will take that right now if you said oh, yeah, 15 points to the yeah. Eagles." And all of 15 points coming in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Right, I mean, they didn't score for the first three quarters, if I'm not mistaken. So, correct. Offensively, the worry is okay. Now the book's out. Now we've got some tendencies. Now we kind of know what you're trying to get done. I'm not saying that it can't revert back and be somewhere in the middle. I, I actually, That's I think I it think. can. Yeah. But that is the worry now for the Saints. What do you do to adjust to the adjustment? Because you know, at first, yeah. we thought, okay, well, you're going to run some 49er Shanahan principles, and, but, and they did, but they did their own thing as well. Well, now that your own thing's on tape. See, again, like I think it's, they are, they are running the McVay Shanahan <clears throat> kind of principles and what worked before against that exact system just worked again. So, yep, correct. The blueprint is out, but you know, it's not, I don't think it's – I agree with Jacob that I think it reverts somewhere in the middle. I don't think the Saints are a 45 points per game offense. I don't think what we saw against Philly is what we're going to see for the rest of the season. I think we land somewhere in the middle, and I believe somewhere in the middle is a winning football team. I believe somewhere in the middle is a playoff team. I believe somewhere in the middle is a division champion. And I believe somewhere in the middle is a team that can compete for the NFC – because the Eagles sure as hell are going to compete for the NFC. And we took them to the brink. They took us to the brink. So I'm a little more, I'm less, I'm less, I think my ceiling has, has come down a little bit. Because before, before the Eagles game, you know, you're thinking, <clears throat> okay, if we beat Philly, we're 3-0 and going into Atlanta. If you beat Atlanta, you're 4-0 going into Kansas City. At that point, 12 wins, 13 wins is super achievable. If that's the case, you're probably the one seed. If that's the case, you probably have the most wins in, in, the, in, the, in the entire NFL. Like Now it's a little bit different. Now that top end of 13 wins, you know, number one seed, like all of that. It's like, okay, compress that a little bit to where now we're just win the division, host playoff games, compete for the conference. Like we're back there. We're back in that kind of goal setting, which which is, I mean, again, three weeks ago, who wouldn't have taken that when we were projected to win seven games? You're going to have to adjust based off what the defense is adjusting to you. Wow, just yeah. um, agreed, agreed, hundred percent. Good video, good stuff. I think their heads are where they need to be. Like, like they're saying the right things. They're saying what everyone should be saying. That hey, that sucked. No doubt about it. That was not fun to be a part of. But. It is what it is. It happens in the NFL. We got countered. Can we counter the counter? Can we figure things out? It's better to happen in week three than the Super Bowl. Just ask Sean McVay. So get on down in the comments below. How are you feeling? 
Ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you in the next video.